Good afternoon, everybody. This is Pastor Randy here. It's uh, Monday afternoon, December 10th, and I just wanted to make a quick video and reach out to all of you about the start of our exciting coming home fundraiser that Julie Bernhardt launched yesterday during worship service. And so as we move forward, I wanted to just kind of discuss a couple of key items so that we can all come together to make this a successful transition. So let's begin with some key questions and some things that we need to think about. First, why? Why are we doing a coming home fundraiser? And how do we need to think about the coming home fundraiser? Let's start with this. Because of generous givers to the Future Expansion Fund up to this point, we do not need a capital campaign to buy the Saks Vic facility. And it's really important to note, everybody, this is very unusual. It's very unusual. Most of the time, churches need to do a large, aggressive capital campaign in order to buy or build a building. Now, these givers who have given to our future expansion fund up to this point have been relatively few in number. And so I think it is important to note that it is time for the rest of us now to step up and to join them and to invest in our new home. This coming home fundraiser is the way that we can do it and a way that we can sort of complete the process. It's so exciting it's, and, and, it's, and it's so doable, everybody. So let's, let's move on to this thought here. Um, the items the coming home fundraiser are addressing are necessary items to transition to a fully functional church as we have been functioning. In other words, we can't just move into the building. We have to have things that allow us to do and be church. We need chairs to sit on. We need tables. We need cleaning custodial uh, resources. We need to paint. We need to clean carpets. We need to do a lot of things. And so these are all necessary items. Now, I know that the natural um, question that everybody probably has and should have is then, okay, Randy, uh, we're asking, uh, we're looking to raise a lot of money here. Just exactly what is that money going to? And so I'm going to go ahead and share with you the budget for this Coming Home Fundraiser. So here we go. The Coming Home Fundraiser budget. Here's the first item. A children's wing, okay? Saxvik has an entire wing of classrooms that we are dedicating to our children's ministry. Um, and so we are dedicating uh, or budgeting an amount of 5000 to that wing so that they can clean carpet, they can paint the walls, they can get the supplies necessary um, to have a successful children's ministry in that wing of the building. Next. Uh, the adult ed wing. There's another whole wing, six classrooms, that we're going to be dedicating to adult ed. And I know that for those of you who come to church on Sunday, you're wondering, well, what do you mean, what adult ed? But on Wednesday nights, we actually have four, yeah, count them, four adult Bible studies that go on. Plus, if we have the building, I will start offering adult ed classes as well. And so we need to do some things to that wing. Luckily, we adults are a little easier um, in terms of our needs than, than the children's are, and it should be that way. So we've budgeted 2500 again, for paint, carpet cleaning, and just some basic tech. Next, worship space. Keep in mind, folks, we're going to be taking a gymnasium, and we're going to be converting that into a sanctuary. And so that's going to take some money. We're going to need to change the lighting in that room. We're going to need to do some paint work. We're going to need to do some sound absorption work in that room. Um, maybe do uh, so. We're going to need to put up projection and some things like that. That's going to take a little bit of money. So we put fifteen thousand in for that. Next, uh, the youth wing. Um, the youth wing also has four large classrooms, and it's very excited. I know that Julie Dahlbeck and her team are very excited about taking that wing and really turning it into an awesome youth space. But the youth wing's carpet is not as in good a condition as the children's wing is, and so we think that it's possible we may, may need to do some carpet replacement there. And so we've budgeted a little bit more, about 10000 for carpet, cleaning, paint, supplies. Next, kitchen. Uh, Tim Pesky, uh, ministry coordinator, has done a marvelous job in negotiating with the Bismarck Public School Systems. And in his negotiations, he has been able to basically uh, get all of the needed appliances for a fully functioning kitchen. Having said that, we're still going to need about $3,000 to get just the little things. Uh, dishwashing supplies, dishwashing soap, pots, pans, spoons, things like that, silverware. So we've got 3000 in for that. Next, conference room. Um, 
many people on the tour ask me, Pastor Randy, where is your office going to be? And my answer is nowhere. I am not planning on having an office. Having said that, we are going to have a conference room um, that will serve as a multi-purpose room that I can work in, that the board can have meetings in, and that adult ed classes can meet in. And so we need to, we need about a thousand dollars there for uh, tables, chairs, a um, little paint, and some projection. Uh, next, this is a super important line item in this budget: future repairs. Um, Saxvik is in marvelous condition. However, it is inevitable that any large building, no matter what you buy and where you buy it, is at some point going to have a breakdown and is going to need a repair. And so we would like to seed an account with $25,000 and, and continue to contribute to that too, um, so that when that inevitable time comes, we are prepared. We have money set aside, we don't have to panic, and we can address whatever issues come along when they come along. Next, uh, appraisal. The current appraisal that the BPS used um, is too old now, and so we're going to have to have a new appraisal done, and that's going to cost us some money. It is possible that we have budgeted a little too much for this, but we wanted to be safe. And if we do save any money, uh, we'll probably put it into the future repairs fund. Custodial. Yeah, it's a big building and it needs cleaning. So we're going to need cleaning supplies, bathroom supplies. We're going to need uh, commercial grade um, vacuum cleaners and perhaps carpet cleaners. We're going to need uh, mop buckets. We're going to need ladders. We're going to need a lot of things. So $5,000 for custodial. Next. Uh, lock cores and handles. Uh, Tim also did another good job of negotiating with the Bismarck Public Schools. They'll be taking all of the lock cores out of the doors. That's 60 of them. Um, and T Tim was able to negotiate a less expensive way for us to address that. So we're going to need about $3,000 in order to put new locks and handles on the doors in the building. Um, but uh, that should be adequate. Wi-Fi. Uh, the building is wired for Wi-Fi, and we want to maintain that, um, but the BPS is taking the Wi-Fi routers and repeaters and hubs, and they're taking and uh, putting them over to uh, Bismarck High School, so we need to replace those. Automa uh, automation. Um, so one of the really cool things about Saxvik is that the lock system and even the heating system is on automation. We would like to maintain that automation, especially when it comes to the lock system. We want our building to be very secure, and we want to have ultimate control over when the doors open and when they don't, and how people can get in. And so we needed a budget about 10000 just to make sure that we had money to um, maintain that automation in, in the transition. Chairs and tables. This is a big line item. Um, yeah, we need worship chairs um, for the sanctuary. Nice, good, soft ones to sit on for everybody. Um, and chairs that can be then transferred over to the new sanctuary when we build that. We need rectangular tables for classrooms. We need round tables for the fellowship area. We need folding chairs for all of those areas. So um, I did some homework, and that's going to be around $20,000. Um, if we're able to save money, great. If we save it, we'll transfer it into either the future expansion fund or into the future repair fund. But that is a pretty fair number there, 20000 for those items. Uh, signage. We need to put some basic signs on the uh, west and east side of uh, Saxvik um, to really make it our home. I'll put an Inspire Family Fellowship sign on each side and perhaps even a little bit of money to do some signage inside the building so people can easily find their way around. And that comes to a grand total of $115,000. So you can see that it doesn't take long uh, for a lot of little things to add up uh, to that amount. So let's move on. The next thing, how? How can we come together for this coming home fundraiser? And I, and I think, actually, the, this is some good news. Okay, Number one, the goal is $115,000. And that sounds like a lot of money. And yeah, the truth is, it is a lot of money. But not for all of us if we come together and do this and everybody steps up and if everybody gives something we can do this okay um, if you divide one hundred and fifteen thousand dollars by one hundred and fifty givers and we actually have i think more than that um, that comes to seven hundred and sixty seven dollars per giver so if we get 150 people to give seven hundred and sixty seven dollars uh, we will uh, get to that $115,000 mark. Uh, but here's the good news. We can also uh, divide that by six months. 
So if you divide that over the next six months, December through May, that means that that $767 now can come down to $128 extra per month. And so if we can get 150 people, um, on average, who are willing to give $128 extra a month over the next six months, we will meet that goal. That is a very, very doable goal. Now, some things to keep in mind. Um, we want us all to commit to the principle of doubling down for six. Commit to the principle of doubling down for six. And whether that is literally doubling your current giving, okay? Remember, we want you to give over and above your normal giving because we have to continue to do ministry while we're making this transition, okay? So this is giving in addition to what you normally give. If you are able to double your current giving for a six-month period, God bless you. We, we are excited about that, and we certainly welcome that. But we also know that there are people who, for example, are tithing, and they're already giving a lot of money, and the idea of doubling for them is not going to be realistic. Well, we want those people and, and those other people who maybe, because of whatever reasons in their circumstances, aren't able to just double down, to at least commit to an extra amount to stretch a little bit for the next six months and, and contribute to the cause. And so the idea is to stretch for a short-term goal, to, to really commit to that. Um, and so that's what we want, that, that principle of doubling down for six. Again, whether that's literally or you're committing to an extra amount for the next six months. We should note that single one-time large gifts are also welcome. So if you don't want to do a little a bit over the next six months you know, each month, you just want to do one large check, that is certainly fine. You can do that. Okay? Um, we're all committing to stretching. Everybody's going to commit to this for a short-term goal. Um, we realize that some people can give less, and we also realize that some people can give more according to their ability and to, to their circumstances in life and to the amount that God has blessed them with. And we understand that. And we're hoping that between those who are only able to give a small amount and those who are able to give large amounts, we will meet this goal. But I would say this. I do think that the principle is, is that we all should give. No matter how much that is, we should all commit to giving towards this. Now, I have something really exciting about this, is that everybody who gives and commits and invests in the Coming Home Fundraiser, we're gonna, we have a way that we're going to honor you in the facility itself. Um, and it's a really cool idea, and I'm not going to tell you now, but uh, we're going to tell it to you later as we kind of move along with this. Um, but we have a really, really awesome way of basically building some history into the building and, and honoring everybody, no matter how much they were able to give, everybody who gives will be uh, recognized and become part of the... Um, the architecture of this facility. How's that for exciting? So finally, how do you give? Okay, here are your options. Number one, you can give a one-time large gift via standard check. Put coming home fundraiser in the memo. Drop it off in the Sunday offering, or you can mail it to our UPS post office box, which is 547 South 7th Street, PMB number 244, Bismarck, North Dakota, 58504. Wouldn't it be nice to get this done so that our new address will not have to be a UPS post office box? I think so. The other option is this. Um, you can go to our website. Go to www.inspirefamily.org and then click on the word contribute near the top of the home page. Then after that, click on the automated giving link that you see. And then you will see the following page to the right there, that donate page. Okay. Then what we want you to do is click on the downward arrow, okay, so you see the word general there, and if you go to the right of that, you see that little kind of downward arrow, click on that, and you can then change that from general to future expansion. That way we know that this gift is going into the Coming Home Fundraiser. Put it into the future expansion fund, okay? Next, enter the amount that you want to give. Then you will go to the next line where it says frequency there. And you will indicate, again using, clicking that downward arrow to the right, whether you want the gift to be one time or regularly. Okay, so you can make that choice. If you just want it to be a large one-time gift, leave it at one time. If you want to give monthly over the next six months, put down regularly. Finally, make sure that you put your email address on there so that we can send you a tax receipt. Okay.
It's pretty, it's, it's, it's that simple. I should also note that for this fundraiser, you cannot do it via text to give because text to give does not allow us to know whether that's going to general fund or to the fundraiser. So these are your two options. Standard check, put it in the offering or mail it or go to the website and you can do this with a computer and it, or you can use your mobile phone. It works really great on your mobile phone and you can give this way that we just illustrated. Okay, so having said this, uh, we are really, really excited about this. I am so happy that we had a unanimous vote last week for this, and I'm really prayerful that this will translate into a lot of support. $115,000 isn't a lot of money when you consider what it is that we'll be getting. We're going to be moving into a school after only 18 months of being a church. How good is God? Let's come together. Let's make this happen. We can do that. And if everybody stretches a little bit, or a lot if you're able to, and gives for a short period of time, this can become a reality. And that reality can bless people in this, in this new neighborhood, and, and we can bless the people of Bismarck. Thanks, everybody. Again, this is Pastor Randy. I really appreciate you, remain prayerful for you, and look forward to moving forward with you. Have a super day.